I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and we're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop. Today we're going to be working on a silver cloud differential. This comes out of actually a P5, but it's the same as this uh, cloud 3. All right, now is the tricky part. We've got to get these things off of here. Um, they're hard to get off. They're on there. That was, sounds good. Sounds like it might come off fairly easy. And like I said, they're aluminum, so you want to be, you don't want to be too aggressive with it. I forget which side the gear's on. It's got to be this side. Not. What? 59. Now, I'm not sure if you can put this back on wrong, but I'm going to scribe it just to make sure. What's that? I think you can. Or was it the did you do it by? Uh, yeah, the shafts you can put on anyway. Yeah, I think that's the shafts. I think there's there's some of these that are a little bit offset. I think I'm okay on that. You learned that the hard way, huh? Yeah, oh yeah. I was going off. Uh, 64 bolts done. Nice stuff, huh? That's water. That's moisture, isn't it? Well. Touch it and go ahead. There's there's rags around here, but the, there could be water in here. Look, you get all this crap that builds up in these. It's, well, if it's, if it's breathing through that little breather element, then water is necessarily coming in. Yeah, you see, the same way. Ah, voila. There's your ring gear. And we can go ahead and get this side off now. As you can see, you got to be careful on this because this goes on the outside. This is steel, I think. This is aluminum. And it go, actually goes around this. It's a very precise fit. I got all the bolts off. Using a pretty blunt chisel, but it's not being very friendly. this and then on this side I'm taking it all apart because I'm going to get it pretty cleaned up this is where the this the seal goes for this side so this has these locking washers what are those called the is there a technical term for those? tab locks tab locks <clears throat> thought maybe there was some special double stitch stitch they could have put a few more on this one though <laughs> Seems a little short when you look at the big picture. <coughs> Thank you. 
Good to see you out there, Mike. Mike's my uh, star employee. He started about almost a year ago, right? Probably a year. February. He's doing very well. He's a young man and he likes these cars. That's the odd thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to find. In fact, he pulled this thing out for me. So the, the work on these is not that hard. Let me see some. Um, if you don't mess with the adjustments, that's that's where you get in big trouble. Is if you mess with the adjustments, and the adjustment, like I said, on this side screws in and out, and what that does is just adjust how much tension there is on this. And there's shims, I think, on this side, so they can adjust the position of this big gear in the middle. So. Let me get this off and I'll show you. Differentials are, it's almost an art to set up a, a ring gear and a pinion. I have not been real successful at that. I remember having a hell of a time on a Aston Martin back in the 90s, and it had a, a rear end on it, similar to the Jaguar, which is a big cage. This live, or this, the, the floating, or whatever, the U-joint axles, independent rear suspension. And you got to take it out and pull the calipers and all that stuff out. And the, and the rotors are inbound or inboard. And uh, what they uh, what we've done in the Silver Ghost to set up a new crown reel and pinion is taking an old differential casing and half of it cut a hole in it. So you put the whole rear end together with the differential with a hole, a window in it. Oh. And you then set up your clearances. You don't have to keep assembling it and disassembling it. So you set it up, and then you put it back together with your half of the housing without the hole in it. Well, that's pretty <laughs> slick. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I guess they made those housings pretty pretty accurate then. Yeah. One, you know. I did the same thing for the uh, setting up the Silver Ghost brakes. Took an old brake drum and cut windows in it. You did what? Oh, the, so, so you could see? Yeah, put the brake drum on and you can set up the alignment of the brakes and the shake back stops and everything uh, through the holes and then you put your own drum on. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what you have here, let me see how did it go in again. This one went in there, okay. So if you look in here, this is called a pinion. This is what the drive shaft hooks to, okay? <clears throat> and you called it a, this is a crown wheel because it looks like a crown, right? Yeah. And this is still a pinion in the British terms? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this turns, and what I was talking about all the force is it's pushing against this. So it's going to be, you know, and then working against the axle, so there's a lot of force in there, a lot of force in there. So. They have to set up, there's two setups on this. You gotta adjust how far in and out this goes, this gear, and they also gotta adjust how far in and out this goes. And you do it with grease, or can't, blue dye, that blue dye, yeah, I do it with grease. And you have to, yeah, you have to uh, kind of load the differential and turn this both directions. You do. Um, you do it, turn it so you get the backside too. So you look for where it's touching this gear. It's supposed to be touching right in the middle. It's right, right, <laughs> on both sides. Yeah. So yeah. Ronnie, Ronnie, how do you load the differential? I mean, uh, you, you figure out some way to, to put some force against this. So in other words, I'd have to put a shaft in it and turn it. Um, and then, you know, obviously clamp this. You don't have to put a lot of load on it. You just have to put a little bit of load on it so you take up any clearances, but you do so, have to. <laughs> So there's no real differential action in this thing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You're turning both axles at the same no, speed. No, it has all the spider gears. They're all inside here. It has the, uh, the spider gears, which allow the axles to move in different directions. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, this is not a positive drive. That's inside. And we're not going to get into that. They don't usually fail. This is here for noise. Um, so 
the way that they move this in and out, I told you about this over here. They've got that adjusts in and out, so that adjusts this, that bearing, right? This one has got the Belleville washers, okay, and then it's got a shim, and this is measured. They measure this to set it up, you know, they set up the position, I believe, of this side, and then they adjust the clearance with this, that side. But that's just my guess. And this thing holds it in there, so that's... Ronnie, uh, your intention is to uh, re replace the noisy bearing. Mm -hmm. How do you isolate that? You I mean, put the car in the air, and that's how I do it, and I go with a stethoscope. Uh -huh. I run it. I put it in gear and let it run, and then I start searching for where the But you're going to replace all the bearings yeah. in there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The noise was up here. Got it. Okay. But, yes, I'm not going to take it this far apart and not put in a few more bearings. Right. 